Good evening, everyone, again. <laughs> so uh, thank you all for coming and everyone who's watching online, and especially thanks for In Enlightenment for giving us this opportunity to be studying this topic tonight. Uh, so we'll be talking about our afflictions, something that is so personal and so like known for everyone. And uh, we're going to try to understand the relation between the cause of afflictions, what the hard times that we pass in life, and the evolving planet, because uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how our planet is evolving and uh, what's the relation between these two things. Uh, before we start, of course, we can start a lecture about Spiritism without talking about Kardec. Um, every, for every lecture we have, especially for the Spiritism, uh, we have a lot of spirits who over the time came uh, to give us uh, more information about the laws of nature, about God, about what Jesus tried to, taught, to teach us and we didn't understand, even though like he tried hard for that. And uh, Kardec is uh, this person who put together a lot of information that the spirits gave to him, giving a new whole view, vision or view about uh, what we knew already, what Christ came to tell us. And now we have, uh, through these five books, we have like the basis of Spiritism. So tonight we're going to focus especially on uh, the Book of Spirits, which is a book with questions and answers. So Kardec would go to a medium, the medium would channel uh, answers for his questions, and he would try in a very scientific way, try to understand more things about, the, about our life, about things that, are, uh, that involve us. And uh, these questions and answers are all compiled in the Book of uh, the Spirits book, sorry and the gospel according to spiritism here is in french but it's the same thing so the gospel according to spiritism where it's uh, the love uh, the law law of love that jesus came to teach us in another way in, uh, according to what the spiritism brought new uh, to this law um, and from the Spiritist book, what we know there is that there are 10 natural laws, 10 moral laws uh, that the planet, uh, that applies to the planet. So we have, for example, the law of adoration, the law of reproduction, the law of liberty, the law of justice, of love, of charity. And today, specifically, we're going to focus on these two laws, the law of progress and the law of destruction. And it's funny because... Uh, when we think about God and we think about how he, when he built our planet, uh, we don't think about how he applied the law of destruction and how this is a law, like a moral law, a divine law, because this comes from God. And on Friday, when we're talking here in the Enlightenment, uh, and I, I was summarizing about uh, the lecture for some people here, I mentioned, okay, we're going to talk a little bit about the law of destruction. And someone asked me, oh, you're going to talk about destruction? And it's funny because we don't think about destruction as something coming from God. But it's something, and that's what we're going to study today. It's something that's important as well. It's part of our life. And it's something that we need to study, we need to understand. Because once we understand it, it may hopefully it makes things better in our life because we start understanding uh, some things that we go through so uh, in the the first chapter of the spirits book when Kardec starts asking about God because he couldn't start a whole new doctrine understanding this whole new doctrine without first understanding what God was for that doctrine and thankfully it was the same thing that Jesus taught us God's love and the spirits the, told us uh, some attributes of God. And they told us uh, God's eternal, God's immutable, God's immaterial, God's unique, God is all powerful, and God is supremely just and good. God is not just just and good, He's supremely just and good. He's completely just and good. So, this is something that uh, I want each one of us to keep in mind because this will be very important when we start talking about suffering. How a God that's supremely just and good bring us so much pain sometimes? And why this is still just, this is still good? And why we need to go through that? 
okay? So keep that in mind, God is supremely just good. Never forget that. So the first thing that uh, Kardec uh, learns from the Spiritists is that we are all created equal. On the question 115, he asks, have some spirits been created good and others evil? So Kardec wanted to understand why some spirits, why some people on earth, they were good and some others are evil. Uh, where is the justice of God if the spirits were created like that? If he created some spirits just to do good, to go to the heaven, let's say, or in just spirits to do evil, to make others suffer, that wouldn't make sense. So Kardec tried to understand that. And the answer is that the spirits gave was God has created all spirits simple and ignorant. That is to say, without knowledge. So we all were created simple and ignorant. We, all, we were all created equal. Uh, this is very important because then we understand that there was no privilege. It's not that I was created worse than Sonia. Just because, like, today, nowadays, Sonia might be more evolved than I, but we were created equal. And if we arrive at this point where Sonia is more evolved than I on this planet, on this moment, it's because there is, it's, there is a cause, right? It's not that she started early or she started, well, she might have started early, but she started with some advantage as, uh, than me. No, we, all, we were all created equal. And they say God has given each of them a mission. And this mission is aimed at enlightening us and progressively leading us towards perfection through the knowledge of the truth in order to draw us near to God. So we, each one of us were created equal with a mission. And this mission is aimed at enlightening us so that we can grow. And by growing, by progressively coming to perfection, we can, uh, we can get closer to God. We will never be perfect as God is because He is immensely perfect. He is the, the, the whole one that's completely perfect. But we might get close to Him. We might get close to the perfection that is reserved for the perfect spirits, for the spirits who are evolved enough, that, who acquired this, who uh, accomplished this mission, who acquired this perfection through knowledge of the truth. So, in the second part of the answer, spirits keep, say, keep answering, saying, spirits acquire knowledge by passing through the trials imposed on them by God. And that comes the part where we start thinking, oh, so the trials that I pass, they are imposed to me by God. But the spirits un explain how we can learn from this trial. They say, some spirits, some of us, we humbly accept these trials and thus arrive more quickly at their destiny. Whereas others cannot endure them without complaining, thus through their own fault, these later, these later ones, the ones that complain, remain far from the perfection and bliss promised to them. So the difference is that when we, get through a we go through a trial, we get two choices. We can humbly accept these trials and we can say, yeah, I understand it comes to, uh, from God. And I understand that God is just and good, so it might be good for me. Maybe I need to go through it. And this will, will bring us closer to perfection, a little bit closer, not like it will bring us to perfection right away, but it will make us learn that lesson. Or if we start complaining, then it keeps us far from that. So the first thing that we learn here is that we should pass, we will pass through trials because God imposed them on us, and maybe there is a reason. We're going to uh, learn about that. But especially that we should do that without complaining, by being humble. Okay? And Kardec, uh, by commenting on that answer, he says, oh, so spirits are like children. And the spirits say, yes, your comparison is correct. Spirits are like children. So imagine a children, imagine a baby, uh, a father, a mother, uh, they will keep that, hopefully they will keep that baby alive, they will keep that baby healthy. And uh, since the baby still doesn't know what to do, what's best for them, they will uh, feed them, but they will only feed them uh, food that's adequate for babies. 
they will teach them little by little and the baby, the toddler will sometimes fall, it will like hurt sometimes, it will, need, it will be needed to like being brought to a doctor, to have injections and the parents will allow that. Why? The baby is crying, the baby uh, is feeling that pain, the pain of going for a doctor and you know, uh, but the parents allow that because it, they know it's better for the baby. And each parent has a mission and they know that it's to keep the baby alive, healthy, so that they can be a healthy adult, healthy morally and physically. And that's exactly what God does to us. Uh, God is this parent, but not only in one life, not only like as a baby, but through many lives, we are created equal or ignorant without knowledge. And we acquired, we acquired this knowledge through many lives until we become this perfect spirit one day after passing through many pains, passing through many going to doctors, falling, being, uh, being uh, uh, loved by our parents, being loved by the ones who are uh, around us. So yes, the spirits are like children. Maybe we are still like that. Maybe we are here in the middle and most probably we are and we're gonna see why and I'm, I'm pretty sure we're far from this one, but we're gonna get there one day. And it's up to us to say we're gonna, if we're gonna get there faster or not, and we're gonna see why. The other thing that we should learn is that we are always evolving. Because Kardec asks in the question 118, can spirits regress? Can they degenerate? And the spirits say no. It's not like maybe or depends. So in the spirit, in spiritism, we always there are a bunch of questions that people ask us, and we say, oh, it depends on the case. So it's like you're gonna see, you're gonna hear that a lot. Oh, because I have a parent who did that, that, that. Yeah, it, it's gonna depend on the case, you know. Uh, but in this case, can spirits degenerate? No, it's no. The spirits don't degenerate, and they explain why. They say as they progress, they gain an understanding of what's holding them back from perfection. When a spirit finishes a particular trial, it never forgets the knowledge it acquired. A spirit may remain stationary, but never regress, it never degenerates. So, again, like a children uh, that's growing up, that's learning, uh, they, once it learns, once, let's say, it goes to school, it will learn, it will uh, go, through, go through tests and finish uh, some class, it will not go back there if they pass on that class. Same thing it's in life. Once we're going through trials, we're gonna understand that why we're going through that and we learn that lesson. Because remember that we have a mission, remember that we need to learn and this will bring us closer to perfection. It's because every single trial that we pass through, we learn something new. And once we learn that, maybe in this life we don't remember, maybe when we reincarnate, we don't remember what we learned in the past life, but it's inside us. And once we discarnate, once we go back to our true self, which is our spirit, we're gonna remember that if we need to. And we're not gonna forget. So when a spirit finishes a particular trial, it never forgets the knowledge it acquires. That's why we never degenerate. So if we know someone and you know that person is good, then uh, if they do something bad, it's not because they are going back and oh my God, they, they forgot the good that they could make. No, it's just bad choice, but still they, they have goodness inside them. And the afflictions are so important that there is a whole chapter in the, uh, the Gospel According to the Spirit. So every time you see TJTS, it's the Gospel According to the Spirit, I try to make it shorter here. But there is a sh whole chapter in the Gospel According to the Spiritism only about afflictions. It's the, the chapter blessed are the, afflict, the afflicted. So Kardec and the spirits, they brought us to us uh, some messages based on uh, the the, discur the discourse about, uh, from Jesus about, for example, blessed are the afflicted because they should uh, inherit earth. And they talked about why afflictions are so important, why afflictions are just, why afflictions are something that God imposes to us so that we can learn. And at some point they say, the vicissitudes of life derive from a cause 
and as God is just, so that so then that cause must also be just. As we talk, God is just, the cause must be just, because a just person, a just in life, they will not be something unjust. Imagine God that's perfect. And they say that affliction have two sources. And this is very important because this becomes to uh, show us uh, why we go through afflictions, why we suffer sometimes. This first thing is easy, it's the present day life. It's the law of uh, action reaction applied to this life. So you did something bad, you need to learn about that thing that you did, or maybe you feel guilty and you need to uh, go back and pass through that, that part of your life again, that mission again, so that you can uh, uh, talk, uh, talk uh, like remain with people that you uh, hurt. So this is one of the sources of the afflictions. It's the present day life. But also uh, for people who don't understand spiritism, this is the hardest part to understand is that it's for past lives. We don't remember and this is very good that we don't remember, but it's there. It's our life. It is still us. It is still our history. And we are here on earth to also uh, fix these things that we did wrong in the past. And the reason we don't remember is just because uh, God is so merciful that God allows us to not remember some stuff that we did because otherwise we'll get stuck in guilty, feeling pain, because feeling sorry for ourselves because we did that in the past. No. So if we are new, if we are here in a new life, we can simply say, okay, I don't know why I need to go through this. But maybe there is a cause, and there will be a cause, because every single thing that happened to us, it's because God allow us to do that. So if we're going through an affliction, these are the two sources. Either you, it's something that we did this life, and we need to fix, or it's something that comes from a past life, and we, maybe we don't remember, sometimes we do, but still we need to fix. And that's where the justice, com the justice comes. We don't need to understand God is there, and he, uh, God understands it for us, and uh, we know we need to go through it. But unfortunately, it's very easy to just blame our bad luck or the providence, and we see that a lot. Oh, I'm going through that, I'm suffering so much, this is just because I have a bad luck, or it's just because of providence, I don't know why something up there, someone up there doesn't like me and is uh, putting me on this uh, wrong path. No. It's just our choice. We choose where to go and we have to suffer the consequences because of that. Okay? So, uh, and life improves is when we improve. Uh, we put this question here because it's very interesting how Kardec asked that to the spirits. It's a question 133. It's uh, the second part of the question. It's like a continuation of that question. And Kardec asked the following, he asked, what benefit is there for spirits to follow the path of the good if it does not exempt them from the hardships of the corporal life? So basically Kardec was trying to understand what, why should I chose, choose the path of the good if this will not bring me anything good? Like I will still go through the trials, I still go through uh, hardships. So why someone would do that? And uh, Joanna de Angelis in the book Happy Life, she says that uh, when we choose do, to do good, that's the hardest thing. And sometimes it comes with a lot of uh, obstacles in our lives because there are people out there, there are spirits out there that try to bring us back to the path that we were before. And Jesus already said, remember of the door? The door of salvation is very narrow. But the, the door that everyone goes through easily, it's usually not the door that we should go. So that's what, uh, why Kardec asked here. Why should someone choose the good if they are not exempt from that? And the spirits say, they, they the ones who choose to do the path of the good, reach the goal more quickly. Uh, they say the hardships of life are often consequences of a spirit's imperfections. The more purified it becomes, the fewer torments it will have to suffer. Spirits who are not envious, jealous, greedy, or ambitious will not have to endure the torments that result from such defects. So it's basically the, the life will improve once we improve. And we should choose the path of the good because this will lead us 
to fewer torments. So even though we don't see it right now, even though it doesn't seem like it, if we choose to do good and we start doing that, it becomes easier and easier because we're going to start learning. Remember, we don't degenerate. We don't forget what we learned. And we're going to start learning. And we're going to, these actions, these uh, choices uh, start coming easily to us. And the more purified we become, then the less torment, the fewer torments we have to suffer. And uh, the spirits give us an example here. If we are not envious, jealous, greedy, or ambitious, we don't need to suffer from what these characteristics bring us. And uh, so, uh, well, now we talked a lot about bad news, about afflictions, about uh, uh, bad things that happen in life. So one good, thing for, uh, one good news for us, we are not paying it all. And this is taught by us in uh, the Gospel of the Spiritism. Uh, Kardec and the, in the Spirits, they say, the suffering man or women or woman is like a debtor who owes a large sum and to whom the creditor says, if you pay me even a hundredth part of your debt today, I will exonerate you and you will be free. But if you do not, then I shall torment you till you pay the very last installment. So they say that we are this person who uh, is in debt with a lot of money from someone. And this person comes to us and say, hey, if you only pay me a hundredth of that amount, you are totally free. I, I won't torment you anymore. Just go there and live your life. Imagine that. Let's say you, you owe a lot of money and someone say that. What would you do? You would feel happy, of course. And that's what they say, like someone in that situation, they would feel happy and support all kinds of hardships in order to liberate themselves. So paying only a hundredth part of what he owed would be the good thing, right? But what we usually do, instead we start complaining to our creditor and we are not grateful. And usually that's what we do. So something bad comes to our life, bad in the sense of it causes pain, which is not really bad once we understand that there will be something good out of it. But we start complaining, oh my God, why I'm going through this? Oh, life's so hard. Oh, why it only happens to me? But we are not seeing that we're not paying at all. We, if we knew what we had done, if we knew how much debt we, has, we have with God, we would understand that the things that we go on in life is just so, so less than what we needed to do. And we'd be so grateful to God for giving us this uh, discount, let's say. But we don't. We usually are complain a lot. We usually are not grateful. So something that we need to understand is something that we need to be policing ourselves is that am I being grateful to the things that come into, uh, for me in life? That's why for every little thing that happens, either it being uh, happy or either, either being like sad, we need to go in, pray, in prayer and thank God, thank the spirits who are uh, next to us because we are going through that, because we need that and that's why we're going through that. And uh, even better news, we're receiving help constantly. It's something, this is one of the parts of uh, the spirit's book, this question here and especially the answer. That's for me, uh, when I was studying Spiritism uh, some years ago, it was the more, uh, the one that showed the love of God the most for me. Because Kardec asked, what's the mission of the Protect Spirits? Before that, he asked, like, do we have someone uh, or some, some help from, from Earth or uh, in, on Earth? And they say, yes, we have Protector Spirits. And he asked, okay, what is the mission of protect, Protector Spirits? And the spirits say their mission is that of parents towards their children, to guide their wards along the path of the good, to help them with counsels, to console them in their afflictions, and to sustain their courage in the trials of earthly life. And the questions uh, following this one are, so do they stay with us uh, for our whole life? And the answer is yes. They, they 
program our reincarnation even before we are born. They stay with us during our whole existence here on earth. They stay sometimes with us after that because it's their mission. They are our protector spirits. They are spirits more elevated than us that stay on our side, helping us every single moment in life. So, if you think about a good moment in life, your protective spirit was there. If you think about the bad moments, the moments that you forgot about uh, a divine force uh, that is above us, your protective spirit was still there. And the, the spirit was there helping you go through, going through that. Imagine so many times that we kind of push them away in the sense that we, are, we choose the wrong path and we spend sometimes years on that path and they are still there trying to save us from even worse choices and they are still there waiting for us to go back to the right path. Sometimes it takes uh, lives, sometimes it takes a lot of incarnations and, is, and they are still there patiently waiting for us. Isn't that amazing? It's like God is so, loves us so much that he has someone who loves us as well, always going through life with us. So we're never alone. So we have these, we are receiving this help constantly. So uh, this, this is very good, especially to remember once we are going through hard times. It's like, I'm not alone. I have someone helping, uh, helping me. And once I open my heart, once I open my mind to pray for this spirit, they will uh, come because all they want is just for us to open ourselves for them. But one thing that we need to remember is that we receive help, but we need to work it out alone by ourselves. And there is this story that's very famous on the internet, so I'm sure uh, a lot of you already know it. We, uh, this story tells uh, about a man who was uh, like observing a tree one day and he found a co uh, cocoon like, or a chrysalid with a butterfly uh, inside. And uh, he, started, he saw that the butterfly was, was starting to uh, go out of that cocoon, so it, uh, it started like opening that cocoon. So the man waited and he started observing that and saw the butterfly struggling, trying to go out of that. And he was very anxious, wanting to see the butterfly flying, like all the beauty of that, uh, that insect. And it spent like hours and hours and it was very hard for the butterfly to go out of it. So he had an idea, okay, I'm gonna help. So he went there, he got a pair of scissors, he came here and he opened the cocoon for the butterfly. But what happened? Uh, instead of opening the wings and flying as he thought that it would happen, the butterfly actually was with the, uh, its wings very cramped, like very cramped without like any beauty. It didn't open, it didn't fly. It was just spent the life uh, like dragging itself uh, on the floor. And the man, uh, even though he had all the good intention to help the butterfly, what actually he did was to uh, make it possible for the butterfly to fly. Because uh, he didn't know, but what nature does is that all that struggle for the butterfly to open the, cancun, the cocoon and go out of it, it's actually the fluids go, go into its wings so that it can become strong. So all the hours that it spends trying to open that is actually nature working itself so that it can become a real butterfly and fly. So that's exactly what happens to us in life. We have help, we have someone there giving us uh, words of incentive, we have someone there helping us uh, try to make us uh, going in to, the better, uh, to the better road, but they can't come here and say, okay, yeah, I'm doing that for you. No, this is something that we need to do because this is something that we need to learn. We need to become strong uh, out of that struggle. And that's why, like, even though we have help, it's not easy. It's hard because we need to go through that, okay? So every time uh, you, you start thinking about, oh, I have help, but why? Why I can't feel it? It's because maybe it's the struggle that uh, we all need to go through to become strong and to fly. And we live in tough times. That's uh, everyone knows. Uh, everybody suffers uh, fairly. That's what uh, we've been seeing so far. 
And remember, uh, Paul has this in his letter for the Corinthians. He said, no temptation has overtaken you that's unusual for human beings. But God is faithful and he will not allow you to be tempted beyond your strength. Instead, along with the temptation, he will also provide a way out so that you may be able to endure it. Uh, there is a saying in Portuguese that my mother always says, it's like God only gives uh, uh, the code according to uh, the blanket that we have. Uh, that's exactly that. What the, it's like another word for what Paul said here. God only gives us uh, the temptation or the pain according to our strength. So if, uh, if God is giving us that, it's because we are strong enough to go through it. So uh, Paul said that in a letter like thousands of years ago. We, didn't, uh, we still don't internalize that. So let's try to do that. Let's remember that if we're going through something, it's because God knows our strength. Sometimes even we don't know that. But uh, He knows and He will only be tempted. He will only suffer that that we can go through. Uh, but one thing is that we are not the only ones uh, who evolve. It's not like evolution is not something that's personal only. It's only something that affects me. And if I don't want to evolve, that's fine. That will not impact anyone. That's not true. One of the moral laws is the social law. By interacting with, uh, with each one, with other people, we learn and we grow together. And not only that. Imagine, let's uh, make this comparison from the materialist world. Imagine that you see these two houses, okay? Well, this is not a house, a castle and a house. Uh, by looking at this, uh, you could imagine, we could uh, like make a hypothesis of who lives on those places, right? Uh, you, and if you are, let's say, a more modest person, you're going to live in, more, uh, in a modest house. And once we start earning more money, once we start having more resources, maybe you are going to go to uh, live in a palace or live in a castle. Uh, and the same thing is the world that we live on. If we are, uh, it's just, uh, just to imagine that if we are more evolved, we're going to live in a house that is more evolved. And our house is the world that we live. And the same thing that once we, as a society, start to grow and start to develop ourselves, the world also starts to evolve because it's all, in it's all a, a, a set. We are now all connected and growing together. So we might have worlds, for example, Mars that is uh, less evolved than Earth. We, we might have like was as Earth or was as Venus that's more evolved. And we as the spirits can go from one to another through reincarnations. Or we can uh, also stay on Earth, for example, and evolve with it. Uh, it this is not to say that when uh, NASA comes to Mars, they will find a bunch of spirits there, like less, uh, less evolved than us. No, maybe they will go there. They will not find anything. Well, they are there. They haven't, find, uh, they haven't found anything. Uh, because the, the material world that we know, it's not the same across uh, different planets. But it, this is not to say that there aren't different planets. And actually, in the question 55, uh, Kardec, uh, Kardec asked, are all the globes that revolve in space inhabited? And the spirit said, yes. Again, it's not maybe or depend on the case. No, it's yes. The, all the other, the other globes are inhabited. And they said the people of the earth are far from being, as you suppose, the first intelligence, goodness, and general developed. This is pride and vanity. They fancy, we fancy, that God has created the universe only for us. So I don't know if you've seen, like, we are just a small dot in the whole universe. Like, we, we might be, like, even not seen here. Even though like this is billions in we can see like billions and billions of stars and planets. And like there are things out there that we don't even know as uh, like as uh, people living on Earth. So why would you think that God has created all these billions and billions of galaxies and planets only for us? And we are only the lucky ones that are here on Earth that has that have life and like can evolve. No, and that's what the spirits say. We are not the only ones. 
So yes, there is a plurality of worlds, but as we said, it's not that we're gonna go to another globe and find other people there. It's just like different stages of different material and different, but still spirits living there. And Jesus already told us that. Jesus said, the father, in my father's house are many mansions. This is in John. And uh, in the Gospel according to Spiritism, Kardec explained, the house of the Father is the universe. The many mansions are the worlds which circulate in infinite space and offer the spirits who incarnate on them dwelling places which correspond to progress. So, it's basically when Jesus was talking about the many mansions that the <coughs> Father's house have, it's actually all these, uh, all these globes, all these planets that we can go through. And the spirits uh, explained it to us that there are some categories. Uh, and they explained that this is just a better way to see it. It's not that like there are four categories and either you are like in one or the other. It's just that we humans love to categorize everything. So they created these categories and say, okay, yeah, since you need to categorize something, okay, these are the categories of the words. But know that this, this uh, is not like binary, it's not, so we, uh, it's not just like you are in one or another. It's a more like a, a linear progression, right? But they said that first there are the primitive worlds. Imagine the Earth like billions of years ago when uh, with the, the cavemen, right? Like there was no communication, they couldn't write anything, they couldn't, there, was, there was no language, they had to uh, live very hard to survive. So this was a primitive world. It was like Earth on another uh, epoch trying to survive, trying to uh, starting very primitive. And uh, once we, we started progressing, we got to the second uh, part that is the world of trial and expiation. So right now, uh, from most of our lives, and I will explain why, as we know Earth, we are in this category. We are on a planet of trials and expiations. And that's why there is so much pain is still on Earth. Because to go through trials, to go through expiation, unfortunately we still need pain most of the times. Because we are still spirits that need to feel that so that we can learn from that. Uh, so the spirits say that the, in these worlds, the evil is still more predominant than the good. And the, unfortunately, that was uh, the, that is the category that Earth is. Well, not unfortunately, it's just a phase. Uh, the second one is the regenerative worlds. It's a kind of a transition world. They, uh, there, these are worlds where the spirits are a little bit more evolved, so they don't need to feel the pain, like to feel the pain to learn. So they go there, the good is still more, is more predominant than the evil, and they can go there to rest. It's still work, of course, it's not like heaven as we know from other doctrines, it's just uh, resting for the eternity. No, they go there to work, they go there to help one another, but they don't need to uh, go through trials and expiation to uh, progress. And there are the heavenly worlds. The worlds that the spirits who achieve uh, perfection of are very close to it. They go there, they live there, but they come here down to these worlds to help us to keep progressing. And as I said, the wolf was uh, the planet, sorry, the Earth was on uh, this category. But uh, something that we learned a couple of years ago is that we started progressing to this new one. So we are in this transition phase. The, the Earth, uh, Earth is, is stops being only a trial and expiation world and it started going towards the regenerative world. But as, uh, as we said, it's not like a category, it's a linear progression. So it's not that we were never going towards that, it's just that we, are, we were still here, and now we are closer to say, okay, we are tending to pass to the other side and be more close here. And the reason we're bringing this uh, up here is that this is very important to understand why uh, a lot of things are happening uh, right now on our planet. So what can we learn from that so far? We can learn that this is not our first time that we're incarnated. 
So, because if we are not in a primitive world, and uh, as I said, like the in our life, the most of what we know from Earth is that it was a, a world of trial and expiation. It means that we have already incarnated either in primitive worlds or on Earth while it was going through this transition, while, uh, while it was as uh, a world of trials and expiation. But for no means we are in our first incarnation. It's not like we can't say, oh, I didn't know any of this. No, this is something that we know because it's in, uh, it's in, uh, in our conscience. It's just the laws that God gave us. Second, uh, since the Earth, since Earth is a world of trial and expiation, there are a lot of spirits evolved intellectually going through expiations and trials in order to evolve morally. So we know that most of the times we first evolve intellectually and intellectually, and then uh, start evolving morally because we need to understand the difference between good and evil before we start saying, oh, so I'm going to choose the good path right now. So that's why we go through trying the expiation. And that's why we know so many people who know a lot about science. So the technology is so advanced right now, but people still need to uh, evolve so much morally. And I'm not saying people outside. We ourselves need to evolve morally. Even though we know that, now the, that's why we, we need to study even more. Because by knowing that, we need to start applying that to our lives. Another thing is, uh, in the Genesis, Kardec said, the present epoch is a transition one. The elements of the two generations, the worlds of trials and expiations and the regenerative worlds, are mingling together. Placed at the intermediary point, we assist at the departure of one and the arrival of the other. Each one signalizes itself by its own proper character. So we are in this transition. And we start seeing uh, the good and the evil is still trying to battle the good. And we can feel uh, these uncertainties sometimes of, um, we, are we in this world of trials and expiations or are, are we going really towards the regenerative world? And we're going we're gonna to learn more about that, uh, about like this transition that we're going through. Uh, but I wanted to talk here about how this is not a new idea. It's not like Kardec brought it in the Genesis or anything. Jesus, on, in the Mount of Olives, he had uh, what they call uh, the Olivet Discourse, uh, also known as the Lear Apocalypse. And the, the reason they call it like that is because Jesus warned about a period of transition, a period of re regeneration, and it is uh, explained, well, it is described in three by Mar Matthew, Mark, and Luke. So, for example, the transitioner, when Jesus was talking about transition, he said there would be, you will hear about wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will, nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. So it's something that we knew it would happen because Christ told us more than 2,000 years ago. But the most important part here is see to it that you are not alarmed because this is something that's planned. This is something that will happen. This is not, we are not saying that God wants people to, uh, to make wars, but he allowed it, God allowed it so that we could learn faster because it, and in the spirits book i don't know if i brought it here no in the spirits book kardec asked why there are wars and the spirits respond because uh, the men needed it so that they can exercise their animal nature so uh, and that's why god allow us to do that it's uh, our free will uh, being put in practice but kardec also asked uh, we was we were uh, this is not something someday disappear from the earth? And they say yes. When men and women understand justice and practice God, God's law, the nature's law that we saw, the ten ones, then all nations will live as brothers and sisters. So there is a bright future ahead. The, all, the war will disappear because we don't need like a first or second war uh, declared to say we are war. Sometimes we have wars inside our homes. Sometimes we have wars inside ourselves. So every time uh, the good and evil 
we have to decide between good and evil. It's a moral war that we're going through. But we will eventually, uh, the, the good will win. And uh, once we, uh, we understand justice and practice God's law, then we're going to uh, have ended the war inside ourselves. Another thing is that, uh, and this, this was a lot of, there was a lot of discussion a couple of years ago because of tsunami, when about destructive calamities. Uh, so Jesus said there will be famines and earthquakes in various places, there will be great distress, unequaled from the beginning of the world until now, and never to be equaled again. So Jesus said, okay, God will send some uh, destructive calamities, some, for example, earthquakes, or tornadoes, or tsunamis. And uh, Kardec also asks why, and the spirits respond, so that the, you can progress quicker. So we need that, unfortunately. And uh, that's where the law of destruction comes. This is one of the parts of the law of destruction. Kardec asks, is the destruction a law of nature? And the spirits respond, yes. It, well, sorry, it is necessary for everything to be destroyed in order to be reborn and regenerated. What you, can what you call destruction is no more than transformation that's aimed at renewing and improving living beings. So what we call destruction, it's not more than regeneration. And remember that we are going towards a regenerative world, so we need, unfortunately, destruction so that we can regenerate. And the re destruction doesn't need to be like this, something physical. Sometimes we need to destruct something, the evil in ourselves, so that the good can come up stronger. So that's why there is a law of, re of destruction. It's because once we destruct something, it will regenerate, and then will be renewed and our lives will be improved by it. And that's why also we have destructive calamities. So Joanna de Angelis, which, uh, who is uh, Divaldo Pere Pereira Franco's uh, pro uh, pro spirit protector, protective spirit, uh, she says in one message about the regeneration of the earth, she says that uh, our life and the earth, uh, the process uh, as a whole is like, just like trees. And I think it's funny because for us it's, inter it's more real to understand that because we are here in New York and we see this, the four seasons. And we understand that uh, this happens in, in this nature acting uh, in, on the trees. And uh, Joanna says the tree is all good there, they, it's like all green and having a, a let's say a, a good uh, time. But suddenly the cold start to come, and so that the tree can survive the cold, what it does, it, it takes all the leaves out so that it can go through the hard time, it can go through the cold times. But once the cold is, uh, is away and once it starts getting uh, hot again, the tree renews itself. So it's a destruction happening here now at the, this moment as we're passing the year, like on fall, it's a destruction happening. It's the law of destruction being applied for that nature, for the tree. Imagine if we were, we were trees, we would be complaining, oh, now it's the time to remove all the falls and I'll, I'll be all ugly and you know. Uh, but no, it's just like something that nature does and it does perfectly. And it's, exact, it's the, exactly the motive why the trees don't die. It's because uh, it removes its, uh, its leaves and then we have the trees still the whole, uh, the whole year. But the, the thing is, we need to wait to see the end results. Uh, Kardec asked in the question 737, for what purposes does God inflict humankind with destructive calamities? And uh, as we said, to impel them to progress more quickly. Haven't we stated that destruction is necessary for the moral regeneration of spirits who accomplish a new degree of perfection during each new existence? And this is the most important part of this answer. You must see the end in order to appreciate the results. So we must, when we are in the middle of calamities, we don't see the end, we don't see the, what comes next. We are just seeing chaos. And Kardec says that, saying, Man often perceives in these public, public commotions only the momentary disorder and confusion that affect him in his material interests. So we, when we're in the chaos, we only see chaos. But he who raises his thoughts above his own personality, 
admires the providential work which brings good out of evil. Such commotions are the tempest and the storm that purify the atmosphere after having disturbed it. So there is always good out of evil. And sometimes we don't see it. Sometimes it's not uh, up to us really to understand it. But if it happens, and remember that God is just and is good, if it happens, it's because uh, something good will be out of it. By reading uh, that, that part of, uh, I think it's from the Genesis, we remember about uh, some uh, article that we read uh, some time ago about, uh, for example, this one talked about nine ways, 9-11, that virtually sparked good in the world. This is from the Huffington Post from 2013. Uh, there was another article that we read about, but I couldn't really find, which was uh, how New Yorkers changed after 9-11 and how the society, like New York community now, is way better than before because of that tragic uh, day. So again, this is not because God wanted 9-11 to happen. It's not because God sent someone to say, oh, do that tragical thing. No, but he allowed that because first we have free will. So if we want to do that and there is a better, uh, better good out of it, then God will allow it. And here is one, nine ways to, that this is packed good out of the bad. In the world, it's not only New York, in the world, that's important too. Again, going back to Jesus, uh, talking about, so he talked about wars, he talked about uh, uh, calamities, and now uh, he talks about regeneration. He said there will be signs in the sun, moon, and stars. At that time, when there will be these signs, they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When those things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near. So this is the same discourse, this is the same message. It's Jesus talking about what's going to happen in the world. That's why it's called Lear Apocalypse, because it was him uh, talking about events that would succeed. And of course, uh, Jesus always talked in a way that was appropriate for, its time, for his time. So he talked about the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. But it's not really that uh, he or another uh, is perfect spirit or elevated spirit would come in a cloud, uh, physically speaking. But it was, uh, Jesus would send something, or would send someone to help us to understand these, uh, to understand what happens in our life with this power and great glory. And when that happens, it's because we need to stand up and be happy because our redemption is, clear, uh, is near. And Kardec says that. He says Jesus announces his second coming, but he does not say he will return with a carnal body. Neither that the consoler will be personified in him. And we know from the Kardec, uh, from Kardec's studies that the consoler is the, spirit, uh, the spiritism who, that brought uh, new knowledge, a new vision from the teachings of Jesus. And he said he presented himself as coming spirit in the glory of his father to judge the good and the wicked and render to each one according to his works when the time shall be accomplished. So Jesus talked about good times coming and these good times uh, started coming when we started understanding a little bit more about the natures of uh, the nature's laws and we started uh, restudying, understanding a little bit more about Jesus. It's not just the spiritism, but it's every single thing that happens in our lives that make us go back, study about Jesus, study about the gospel of love, and understand what he tried to teach us. So in every single uh, these things that we learn new, then it's this uh, second coming of Jesus, renewing ourselves this love that's just, uh, that is still inside us, but it's just that's something that we don't have active right now because we chose not to. Uh, and the regeneration process is important to talk about it because uh, sometimes when we talk about regeneration, we start saying, oh, Earth is going from the world of triumph and expiations towards a regenerative uh, world. We think, oh, it's going to be something big. One day I'm going to wake up and then the Earth will be a regenerative world and the world will be good and everything will be green. Every, everyone will, be, uh, will love each other. No. 
Uh, actually, we know from other books. So we know from uh, the Emmanuel's book on the way to the light that we have here uh, on the library that that happened with this planet before called Capella. So Capella is a, is a planet that it's a star. We classify it as a star that uh, is more evolved than Earth. But a uh, long time ago, when Capella was going through uh, the transition as well, just like Earth is going right now, they, there, are, there were some spirits there in Capella that couldn't uh, align their level of, of evolution with Capella's level of evolution. Just like we have nowadays. We have people who are still more pending to evil. We have people uh, who are still pending, uh, who are already pending to good. So what happened then? Emmanuel tells us that these, those spirits, they were attracted to Earth because Earth was a planet that was going through uh, this process of going to uh, trials and expiations. And these spirits who couldn't stay more in Capella because they, they didn't fit there anymore, they were attracted here. And Jesus, as the governors, uh, governors of Earth, he accepted them and put them, uh, gave them a place on Earth. And it's funny because uh, if it, this is the first time you, you are listening about it, once I mention what I'm going to mention, you're going to say, oh, I didn't, I never thought about it. Uh, these people, and remember that we, saw, we, ta we told you that first we evolve intellectually and then we evolve morally, generally. So these spirits who came from Capella, they were very evolved more, uh, intellectually. They were not uh, yet evolved morally. So they came to Earth and they became the Egyptians. They became uh, the, the, those uh, Indians there from uh, Hindu. Hindu. Yes, uh, in India, in Incas, Mayas. Yeah, I don't know how it's in English, but yeah. So all these, all these spirits, thank you. <laughs> all these spirits who, are, who were very, very, very intelligent from, uh, for their times. And still, the men from nowadays are still trying to understand how did they do all that? How did they build all these pyramids, all this stuff? Because they were very intelligent, but they were not evolved morally. And that's uh, when we started understanding why that happened. It's because these were spirits that came from Capella and came from other planets as well to uh, start populating Earth and bring us towards to the world of trials and expiations. And that's how we arrive at here. But again, it's not the regeneration process, not something that's going to boom. One day we are regenerate, uh, in the regenerative, uh, regenerative world. Actually, it's just a process. So what happens is the spirits who do not fit on Earth uh, right now, once they start discarnate, they will be attracted to other worlds that are still uh, on trials and expiations, and new spirits who started being born on Earth, they will, uh, they will come from more elevated worlds to help us going through the next phase of our uh, transition. It doesn't mean that it will be all spirits, it doesn't mean that this will happen 100% of the times, but the process has started and this has already started. A lot of spirits that are, who are coming to Earth are red spirits very elevated. Who, are help, who will help on the years to come Earth to go through this process and uh, become this regenerative world. But sometimes, uh, some people, every time we talk about that, someone asks, is the our world really evolving? Because we, heard, we hear so many bad news and that we, have, that we have this feeling that, wait, something's wrong. Like, we are, we are becoming better, but it doesn't seem so, right? And that's true, we have this general feeling that things are not going well. Because the, the news and social media inundate us with bad news. And that's sad, but that's true. One thing that we need to think is, actually we are, uh, we are so technolo technologically advanced that we, the news come to us much quicker and uh, like we are inundated really with news. But also what happens is that this is not new. Kardec, in the Spirit's book, so 160 almost years ago, he asked, humans kind perversity is very great. Does it seem like humans are regressing instead of progressing, at least from a moral point of view? Remember that the spirits had told him, the humans, or sorry, spirits do not regress. But he asked here, like from a moral point of view, doesn't seem like we're regressing, like things, so, so bad things, so many bad things are happening. 
And the spirits respond, you are mistaken. Observe the hole closely and you will see that they are advancing because they have a better understanding of what evil is, leading them day by day to reform their business. The excess of evil will make them understand the need for the good and for the reforms. So if there is one thing that you, you need to remember when you, you go out here, like you go home here and you need to think about it, please, please, please remember of this because this is very important. We see out there, in like every time we talk to, to friends and family, we see people saying that the world is in a bad place. It is not. And the, we always have this, uh, this idea that we are regressing when actually it's just because we are understanding what evil is. And that's where evolution is. Imagine that years ago, not very far from us, uh, slavery was accepted by society. Uh, a husband beating his wife, women not being able to vote, uh, people having to work like a, region, a huge amount of hours, almost as slaves. This was all accepted by society. If nowadays this happens, then it goes to the news. Then it's like absurd and everyone will talk about, which is great. It's just, it just means that we understand what evil is now. And we started thinking about, oh my God, something's very wrong with the world. No, it has always been. But now we are no seeing these things and we are trying to fix it. And that's why we have this feeling. But this is not true. It's, it's not that more bad things are happening. It's just that it comes to our attention and now we start seeing. Remember that like when someone tells you, oh, have you seen that this person always like have this, oh, I don't know, like let's, every time they say something, they always say like, um, um, for example, and then you start seeing it everywhere. Like every time you hear that person speaking, you're gonna notice the, mm, um. it's the same thing. You start understanding that something's bad and then we start seeing things bad and we start, oh my God, that happens a lot. It's not happening a lot, it is actually, but uh, now we're gonna try to fix it, right? Uh, and the spirits say the goods often timid, and that's why also we see more bad news than uh, than good news, because they say that the evil is uh, goes and put itself out there, while the good is timid. They don't tr try to advertise themselves. So I, uh, we brought here five headlines that we don't see everywhere, but these happened like in the past one month and one month and a half. It's a mother who was reunited to her refugee son after 20 years. It's a homeless, homeless person who returned the wallet and cash from a man here in Edmonton. It was a dentist who created a mobile clinic and goes out there to help children, uh, poor children in Kentucky. It's a mom who cried when he saw her sensitive uh, autistic boy uh, being uh, finding peace with a service dog. Or it's a cancer student who won $10,000 and gave it to uh, her grandma who uh, rescued her for foster care when she was 10 years old. So this kind of news that we don't see out there because people are not sharing it on social media, people are not talking about it on uh, when you, you go out for dinner with friends because what, what makes the headlines are the politicians, the bad things that happen, uh, that are happening, you know? So let's start looking for things like that. Actually, I was very happy to see that, for example, this uh, news uh, paper, which I don't remember right now which one, but uh, has uh, a good news uh, section. So there is like a good news and you click there and it's only good news that they show. <laughs> this is amazing. We need that. Yeah. So um, we're gonna, we, we'd like to show you this uh, small video. Uh, the audio is in Portuguese, but there are subtitles in English. And I think it's important for us to see that. Oh, I need to pause, right? Do we need to get the lights for that? Uh, no, maybe not. I don't think so. Can you see? Eu, 
eu acho que vai cada vez piorar, porque o pessoal vai voltar, nem sabe quem está votando. Acho que tem qualidade de vida, de, de pertencer à natureza, acho que todos nós já perdemos em relação e isso é algo que vai acontecer também com as futuras gerações. O planeta não tem mais volta. A agressão que a gente fez ao nosso planeta, a gente não vai conseguir desfazer. Ter, terão mais guerras, com certeza. É, a guerra para mim não vai parar, nunca. Eu pego um quadro, pego tinta ou vinho, alguma coisa. Primeiro, se eu passei, eu ia pegar lá. Eu quero ser artista. Eu sou um Eu tive uma casaca na escola. Meu pai ainda foi muito que eu faço atividade física e eu tenho um esporte também. E se eu for professora, eu quero ensinar bastante. E se eu for veterinária, eu quero ser a lei dos animais. Eu quero ser a lei dos animais. Eu quero que o pai venha. Eu vou cuidar de um monte de crianças e a minha terceira é que estão doentes, está com dor de garganta. So, where did you lose this faith on the future? Like, where in our life did you lose it? Because we had that. And why? So, let's, let's inquire ourselves about that. We, we need to understand why we think that there is not time anymore. And we need to change that. Because our, the kids, our children, or uh, the new generation of Earth, they count on us uh, to make a better place, to make Earth still good for them, because they have dreams as we had when we were kids. So let's keep that in mind. Things are not becoming worse. Actually, they, we are in a great time in our life. We are going through a transition, and we, we get, uh, have this opportunity to help Earth to, be, to uh, evolve even quicker and to evolve together with the planet in this process. And let's remember what Jesus expects from us. Each one of us, we have responsibilities. We have family, we have work, we have uh, teammates, we have society that expects something for us. These are the small missions, uh, small in the sense like small things, a lot of things that we need to do. And Constantine, in the Gospel according to Spiritism, he told us, Good Spiritists, my dearly beloved, you are all workers of the last hour. For how many centuries has the Lord called you to his vineyard without you wishing to enter it? Here is the moment to pocket your ways. So for lives and lives, Jesus expects us to work for him. But we are these workers of the last hour. We are the, we are the ones who are arriving late, but it's still working if we are willing to, and it's still pocketing our ways. Because if we remember from the parable, they received the workers of last hours, they received the same thing, because it's what is reserved for us. And uh, remember that from the message that we was read, before the lecture, Jesus said, this will be a time for you to serve as witnesses. And uh, Emmanuel says, when the master invites someone to take part in this endeavor, it's not so that the person may weep in discouragement or lie around in idle contentment. 
If the master has called you, remember he already considered you worthy of being a witness. So we are worthy of being a witness because the master has been calling us for several lives. And the, the only problem is that we haven't heard it yet, but we need to, because if we open our hearts, we will. So hang in there, keep faithful. That's all what we need to remember. Because we're not saying that we should love suffering. We're not saying that things become easier. They don't. But the, if we start understanding that it's for the best, that is uh, time for innovation, then we start maybe understanding that this is good and we need to go through it. And we just uh, keep the, uh, get the, all the help that we can get. We start praying. We start becoming more willing to receive help from one another. And then we go for it. And just to finish, from Matthew, Jesus say, Therefore do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow we worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. So then let's not worry about tomorrow. Let's take care of the things of today. And then tomorrow we can worry uh, about itself.